Hey everybody, it's Kenna, and I am just doing a quick studio update. I remembered I'd promised you all an update of what I've been working on and kind of been lagging on that, so let me just... Here is the Hackney watercolor painting that I have been working on. This is the second attempt at it. The first attempt, if you guys were reading my Facebook rants about it, um, I have... I had a new sheet of paper, new company, love the paper, it just was not doing what I needed it to do. I'm used to really saturating my colors and the colors weren't absorbing how I wanted it to. So it just was starting to frustrate me as I called it, I was having arguments with the paper. So I finally said, you know what, forget it. Completely ripped it off the board and just started again. And I really like how this one's turning out. I've got that jet black background I was trying to get. It looks a little streaky because I have a huge ot light right here kind of bleaching out details so I'm trying to keep it out of the way. Um, I started out using watercolor was still having a little bit of issues with some streakiness so I broke down and got out my uh, see, now I need my light back here. Huh. Um, I got out my gauche or gauche or gauche I don't even know how to pronounce this stuff I just like using it it's um, it's similar to watercolors, although it's a lot more opaque. It has a bit of a chalky quality to it, and it is it's known it's a water media paint, but it's not classified with watercolors. Um, there's some purists out there that do watercolor where they will not use this. They consider it mixing mediums. Other people, they're a bit more easygoing with it. I was really trying to do 100% watercolor and couldn't pull it off and I just said forget it I'd rather have what I'm envisioning in my head uh, you know rather than oh I stuck to watercolors which by the way I am not predominantly a watercolor artist or even a water media artist I stick to drawing mediums this is probably my 20th watercolor I've ever made I think and that's including in high school where I first started doing watercolors so I like working in them and I need to just do more of them because I have a lot of fun. Just usually in doing drawings, graphites, color pencils, scratch boards, stuff like that. I think I got the light. Paint a little bit. Here is my lovely palette, which is really messy. I consider that the mark of a good artist. I don't know, you guys can disagree with me or not. You see what I mean? I use my pencil, or see, called it a pencil. I use my paintbrush almost like a pencil. I kind of sketch with the paint. I don't really do washes. I don't do a lot of the other techniques that more um, prolific watercolor artists do, I suppose. I just do what works for me. So I just sketch little by little. Slowly darkening this all in. Let's see, this foreground is going to be the lightest part. I'm going to do a nice transition. This is all going to be darker too. It's not going to be this light. Do a nice transition into a mid tone and then into my completely super dark background. Hopefully this turns out how I want it to. That's one reason if, you, if there's artists watching this or people that know artists, this is why we're always frustrated or they always say, oh, they have an artistic temperament. It's because we see something, we know what we want it to look like, and if we can't recreate how we want it to look, that is where our temperament comes from because you just get so frustrated. So keep thinking, oh, in my head it looks so wonderful. and. If you can't recreate that, you just kind of get a little depressed, a little moody. So that is the progress on that. And bear with me for a second. I've actually got uh, here is the first attempt I was talking about. 
See, I like the paper, and it when the paint was absorbing into, it's doing some really interesting like patterns, variations, stuff like that. I really like it. It's got more of like if you're going for more of an impressionistic or something like that, I think this paper would be just wonderful, but I'm going for a certain look and it wasn't working. And you can see the streaks I was talking about. It was starting to slowly drive me insane. So that was attempt number one. Really nice paper. I'm still gonna keep this and play around with it. And that's my phone, so I apologize to whoever gets my answering machine. But um, this paper, I'm going to keep it, play around on it, and figure out a use for it, because it is really, really nice. I like it. I wish I could have gotten along with it, but over it. We had a disagreement. It lost. So that's one last look at that. And now I'm going to try and not trip over everything as we go over to here. I'm away from my color-corrected light right now, so this is going to read a little more yellow. I apologize. Here is the progress on the blue mask. I started on the fringe work here, started doing the bells, having a lot of fun with that. All of this rough, like, coloring in you guys see, that's going to all be bead work. So I actually wanted it to be rough. I didn't want to get, like, a smooth quality, like, the suede of this mask, because I need to go in and make this look like there are hundreds and thousands of little tiny glass beads sewn into this. So that's going to probably take me a while that this is focusing. There's a close-up of it. Having a lot of fun with this. Like, this is all going to be beaded in. All the way down there's beads, 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 beads everywhere. Some feathers. And then the fringe. Fringe all down here and up there. So that is the progress on the blue mask. And I'm liking how it's turning out. It's just taken a while, but having a lot of fun and as soon as this one's done I get to start on the reverse side which is a yellow uh, mask so that should be a lot of fun alright guys that was my update I will talk to you all later